The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Now lift those hands to heaven. Father, let every ear be anointed to hear and every heart receive to receive all that you have here today. We pray in Jesus' name, let all distraction be broken. Let everything that would come to distract the minds and hearts of people be broken now. In Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. I speak of peace now. I never once said, amen. You may be seated. I started talking last week on a subject, understanding authority. And I just want to recap something before I get into today's message, which is along those lines. Because today I'm going to be talking about delegated authority. Delegated authority. But Romans chapter 13 and verse 1, which is the text we used last week, it says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. Now, let me just say this, and I told you this last week. When you read that, immediately people think it's the government, the higher power. And that verse was thrown at us from every angle that we should be subject to the higher power. But The government is not the higher power. The government is a lower power. The higher power, number one, is God. Let everyone be subject to God. God is the supreme authority of all creation. We, We already covered that, and I won't go into that. Go listen to last week. Then the second authority is called veracious authority, which is truth. Truth will always stand. No matter what lies are spoken, truth will come out. Somebody said, but pastor, it doesn't look like it. I got news for you. The day's coming when everybody will stand before God and all the truth is going to come out. It doesn't matter how much they've lied here. They will stand before God. Are you with me? I said this last week, a lie goes around the world eight times before truth gets out of bed and puts his one pant leg on. And it's amazing how quickly people will believe a lie but not believe the truth. I was watching yesterday. I took Alex down to be on a talk show podcast and he was spitting out the truth and they didn't believe it. They did not believe what he was saying, even though everything came from facts, documents, they didn't believe it. No, come on, it can't be like that. Okay, have another booster. I've never seen so many educated idiots in my life. And somebody said, well, I'm, 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 I'm studied. I've made hundreds of millions. You can be a billionaire, stupid moron. Hello. Just because you have money doesn't mean to say you know anything. Are you with me? Truth is truth. And the number one truth is God's word. Above everything else. Can you say amen? Amen. And then the third higher power is the conscience of man. Because people say to me, well, how is God going to deal with people in foreign countries or islands of the sea that have never heard the gospel? There's not one person that's living on the face of the earth that will ever have an excuse on that day because they have a conscience and God's already spoken to them and told them, don't do that. And many have violated their conscience. So the three higher powers, the supreme God, 
creator of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's only one God. Are you with me? The one who sent his son, whose name is Jesus. That God. I said that God. And that one that's given us his word. That God. There is no other way. I said there is no other way. Somebody said there has to be another way. No, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is death. Your conscience. How many have a conscience here today? How many know when you've overrode your conscience? Wave your hand at me. Okay, so don't tell me you don't have a conscience. And God was speaking to you all the time. Now I want to get into what we call delegated authority. This authority comes from God. And I'm speaking especially concerning the church because that's what we represent, the church. The first line of authority from God is for the body of Christ. If we're going to obey God, how in the world do we sit and listen to wicked people? Hello? Who don't believe the word of God? Somebody said, well, they're in rule. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to listen to wicked people telling me what I can do and cannot do. Especially when the Bible says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together, even the much more when you see that day approaching. Somebody said, well, you have to shut down. We're not shutting down. Because if we shut down then, we'll shut down again. Because if you knew what they're planning for 2025, if you caved already, as I've spoken to people, they said, well, I, I didn't, I only took one shot. I took one shot. Why? Because if I didn't take the shot, I was going to lose my job. What are you going to do in 25? How many shots are you going to take in 25? You see, to me, it's a matter of compromise. Well, all they want to do is take one shot. And they just wanted me to wear a mask. And they just wanted me to socially distance myself. In your dreams, we don't listen to you. We do not take our orders from the World Health Organization or the United Nations. Godly people do not listen to wicked people. Somebody said, well, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Oh, absolutely not. You're going to get yourself into trouble because you don't want to obey the word of God. Are you with me? Somebody said, what will happen to me? Well, you could die. I want to say this to people here today. Without the word of God and the Holy Spirit, you will not make the next five years. You won't make the next five years. It's over. I'm just going to tell you. You can think, well, I'll just be out here by myself. I've got my own truth. Okay, well, let's see how that works out for you, huh? Hmm? No, there's only one truth. That's the word of God. And there's only one power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that supersedes the power of the enemy. Can you say amen? Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, and I want to read verse 7. Remember your leaders and superiors in authority, for it was they who brought to you the word of God. Observe attentively, consider their manner of living, the outcome of their well-spent lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, and the leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and his goodness. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. That means he does not change. In the King James, it says, remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken to you the word of God, then whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation or man of life. That's why we tell everybody, 
You've got to find a local church. You have to find a local church. And you have to plug in. You cannot stay home and fellowship at the first church of St. Mattress with Apostle Pillow and Prophet Adedayon and Evangelist Hot Water Bottle. <laughs> Somebody said, I don't have time to go to church. Excuse you. You have time to go sit in the emergency room. You have time to go sit in a dentist chair. Some people have time to go see a psychiatrist. I need help. I need help. Well, come to church. I, I can't. I'm too busy. <laughs> well, why can't you come? Well, I, I need to see my psych, my psyche, my, my, my psychiatrist. The psychiatrist is seeing the psychiatrist. <laughs> and all he's going to do is give you another pill. Hello. And then your bladder falls out. You walk along with your bowels scraping the bottom of the floor and you're having hallucinations, and they find you walking na naked in the neighborhood. It says so on the medicine, the side effects. Come here, come get under the presence of the Lord. Let God touch you. Well, I'm too busy. I'll kick your blessed assurance, you too busy. Oh, give me an excuse. You're too busy. Busy doing what? Well, I have to worry. Somebody has to worry. If I don't worry, oh, so you mean you can, the Bible says, can you add to your height by worrying? Huh? Who of you could grow yourself taller by worrying? Can you add to the length of your days by worrying? Huh? No. You've got to make time for God. You have to make time for His presence. You have to make time to worship Him. Somebody said, what do you mean when I worship? I don't like singing. I don't care if you croak. You've got to worship Him. Sorry, Jesus. This is Jesus here. I didn't mean to hit you there, Jesus. You've got to worship Him, and you've got to come and listen to the Word of God that is able to renew your mind and able to pump, to pump you up, not by way of motivational speech, which pumps up here, but to pump up your spirit man. Are you with me? Because his word is spiritual food that's gonna energize you, that when the problem comes, you don't quit. And you never back down. And when you put it in a corner, the word will rise up on the inside of you. And you say, absolutely not. Hallelujah. So God, the supreme authority of heaven and earth, established delegated authority. Amen. And he said, remember them that have rule over you. Now, does that mean to say that the pastor should run everything like a ruler? You will obey. You will do what we tell you to do. If you don't, you will be tied up with piano wire. No, we're not here to do that. We're here to lead by example, and we're here to preach the word, and we're here to preach it into you. We, how do you know that the word has come into me? When we hear it coming out of your mouth. You cannot have the word in you and have a bunch of other stuff in there. I listen to some preachers, I'm telling you, they're full of it. You know what I mean. Before God could even fill them with the word, they need an enema. That's why they need to come to our meetings here because the Lord will give you an enema. Are you with me? Hello, how do I spell relief? R-E-V-I-V-A-L. You might be thinking you're just sitting here right now, but you don't know a 10 foot angel just stood behind you with a rubber glove. You're about to get the relief that you've been crying out for. Are you with me? 
<laughs> I always know people get it sitting in our meetings because I'll be preaching and they just sit there just staring at me and then suddenly while I'm preaching, they go like this. And I know they just got it. It just happened. The word rule in the Greek language does not mean to lord it over people, but rather to give shepherd-like leadership. In other words, Jesus leads the sheep. The shepherd goes ahead. The people follow. The shepherd does not drive the people with a whip. Ka-choo, ka-choo. No. What shocked me when we just did this tour of Africa the one night after we finished the service, we had 10,000 people in Johannesburg, and after the service at about 9.30, I shook hands to about 12.30, quarter to one, and hundreds of people came and they said, when we saw you get arrested, we never took the vaccine. We never, we said, if Pastor Rodney could get arrested, we're not taking the vaccine. Thank you. So what, what happened? They needed somebody to step out, and the world's looking at you, your neighborhood's looking at you. Your family's looking at you. Somebody said, yeah, but I got beat up pretty badly by my family. Yeah, but they're suffering from the side effects, and you're not. Right. Hello? Are you with me? Conversation doesn't just mean words. It means your manner of living. Our example for leadership is Jesus. So it is my responsibility to follow Jesus. And so you can follow me as long as I follow Jesus. Amen. So tell me, Pastor Alan, you be Jesus here. Let me see uh, who can be, make, be the devil. Come here. You be the devil. Yeah, you. I'm sorry for picking on you. I mean, you're not the devil, but come and be the devil. All right. So now stand over here. Now, you, you must look like you're trying to get me to go your way. I'm following Jesus, okay? So just look at you tapping me, trying to get me to go that way. Okay, I'm following Jesus. My job is to keep following Jesus. Get away from me! You, 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 you have to resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. I'm, I'm supposed to be following you. Why did you stop? You can't stop Jesus. I'm following you. Now, that doesn't mean the devil will leave you alone. The devil will tr come. He'll come again. He'll try. He'll try to get you. I know, I know. The devil's um, trying to get me, Lord. I, I missed the Sunday service. I didn't come. I, I would have been in church Sunday, but the devil got me on Saturday night. In the name of Jesus. All right. Thank you, my friend. He's not the devil. He's a good man. What did you say? I'm strong for an old guy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I know all these young people try to write me off. Don't write me off. I'm not done. They want me to get my retirement. I mean, retirement. You can have it. Say this after me. Jesus is the head of the church. So now what has he done? He delegated authority to the church. And he's the one, according to Ephesians 4, 7, given the church grace, gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now that does not mean to say you call yourself that. You can call yourself whatever you want to, but if you don't have the grace, you don't have it. I've never met so many apostles as today. I'm convinced that if you go to major cities and you walk through the inner city and you fall over somebody lying by a dustbin, he's probably an apostle. I've never met so many people that are prophets, but they can't see. You can't be a prophet and be blind. Are you with me? 
No, these are given by Jesus. Ephesians 4, 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. That's our job. The word perfecting is maturing the saints. How many would say with the up of the hand, and our church now, what, 26 years old this year. How many would say, Pastor, since I've been coming here, I have greatly matured in my walk with God. Wave your hand at me. For the perfecting of the saints, so the saints can do the work of the ministry. What are you hearing here with the testimonies? You're hearing the saints doing the work of the ministry, getting people saved, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. Every one of you should be doing that. Every one of you. I don't care if your dog gets sick. Pray for it. Before you go to the vet, don't just go to the vet. Pray for your dog. Some dogs have more faith than some people. So what happens when they mature? They do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto the mature man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's why we took exception when a major ministry came out and said, Jesus would have taken the vaccine. Are you on crack? You can you just see Jesus talking to the disciples. Um, I think I should take a vaccine. Lord, that would be wise. Let me ask you a question. Who thinks Jesus would take a vaccine? Well, even though I don't need it, I just need to set the example for you, my disciples. How does the way, the truth, and the life go to any other source for a way, for some truth, and for some life, when he is it. They didn't want us to even sing. We couldn't even blow trumpets because a little bit of globule would come through the air and land on you and then you die. What a load of bull. Hello. Somebody said, Pastor, it's finished, it's done. No, it's not. Absolutely not. We, we, we have to travel through Africa in September. There's still countries that require mandates. And I'm not complying. Somebody said, what are you gonna do? I'll tell the country, I'd love to come. But until you got your stinking mandates, I'm not coming to your country. I'm going to another country. Somebody said, yeah, but they really want you to come. Drop your mandates. Because I don't dance to your tune. We come in to set your people free. I said, we come in to set your people free. Now let's talk about authority and responsibility. Hebrews 13, 17, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your souls. So they must give an account and may do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. It is very hard when you see somebody going wrong and you talk to them and you tell them what to do and they still disobey and go wrong. At the end, you have to release them to go wrong because that's not your problem anymore. You have stayed within where your authority was and your responsibility was to tell them the truth. They are the ones then that take the authority and they choose their own path of destruction. Are you with me? Somebody said, what do I do at that juncture? You just pray for them and love them even when you see them going towards the cliff. Pastor Allen and Christian just went to the Grand Canyon and I told you, I can't go there because everybody goes to the edge. 
And he called me, he said, Pastor, it's ridiculous. He said, I can't even rest you. He said, people are going to the edge. Thousands of feet down, they could fall. They're sitting on the edge of the ledge. And that's how many Christians are. They always sit on the edge of the ledge. It's like they want to see, let me see how much I can do by myself. You don't have to do anything by yourself. You can walk with Jesus and he will take. Somebody says, yeah, but I don't want to be religious. Jesus is not religious. Somebody said, what are you talking about? Do you know there are many churches Jesus is not even welcome in today? His word's not welcome in today. There are churches that would not even allow me to preach this way. And I know there's preachers that would say, Rodney, shut up. I am not going to shut up. I'm going to keep blowing the trumpet. I'm going to keep sounding the alarm. I'm not shutting up. The anointing gives you the authority according to the calling on your life and the gifting. Authority proceeds out of responsibility. Authority and responsibility are equal and go hand in hand. If you've been given authority, it means you have the responsibility. If you have been given responsibility, then you should have the authority. Authority never exceeds your responsibility. And when your responsibility ends, your authority ends. In other words, you don't spank your neighbor's children. That's why I want to say this to all the people out there that are not in the ministry who want to bring correction to the church. Shut up. Jesus is the head of the church, and you have no authority in the church. That's why when you see heads of government trying to dictate to the church, you're out of your realm. I said you're out of your realm. You have no authority. If you're a school teacher, then you have a responsibility to teach, train, and to care for your students. You could not properly do your job if you were not also given the authority to correct them. And that's what the local church is for. You know, the moment people come here and they want help or whatever, the first thing, how many want to know what the first thing I ask them? Have you given your heart to Jesus? Are you serving him? And then, this, then I ask them, what church do you go to? Yes, yes, yes. And when they tell me they go to another church, I say, I have nothing to say to you. Go and talk to your pastor because they are not my authority. They're not my responsibility. Are you with me? Amen. So he said, well, we don't have a church. Okay, well, are you going to find one? Well, I don't know. I'm probably not going to find one. I just stay by myself, my wife, myself, my son, and my, my dog, my dog uh, Fido, and my cat, Millie. We just sit in our garage. We listen to gospel music on a Sunday morning and we smoke weed. It's, it's medicinal. It's medicinal. It's the good stuff. The, it's, 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 it's health. We just smoke and, and we feel great. The other day, my cat came and put his paw on me and I felt it was praying for me. <laughs> I looked out my window. A squirrel was sitting on the tree. He talked to me and gave me direction of what to do. Hmm. Cat putting its paw on you. Squirrel giving you direction. You headed down the right road, huh? Hmm. How come you would believe a squirrel while you're puffing? Hello. Somebody said, well, I didn't puff, Pastor. I, I, it's cookies, special cookies. We've got stuff in it. It's just good. The more I eat on Sunday, the happy I get. And it's gone very quiet in here because they legalized this stuff. So everybody thinks, well, it's just all fine. I even saw on television a person called and they were sick. And the preacher who believes in healing and miracles said, look, obviously, if you can't get healed, then try some of it, this stuff. What? What? Say what? What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> if you can't get healed, why do you think we have a healing school? 
So you can come and sit under the Word. Well, I don't feel like sitting under the Word. I cannot sit in the parking lot and just eat cookies. No! No cookies for you. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I was just there, and this little lady, she came, uh, I think she's Korean, she said, eat a cookie, eat the cookie. <laughs> you eat cookie. <laughs> she said she was from the river. No, she's not from the river, she's from a swamp. Now, listen carefully, because you're going to find out where you are. Somebody said, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher. It doesn't matter. Every one of you are ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5.20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ that be reconciled to God. God has delegated authority to the body of Christ. We are his ambassadors. We are representatives. That's why you can go and you can stand on the authority of the word of God. And if you get into trouble out there, you can just blame it on your pastor. My pastor told me. My pastor said that I have authority. My pastor said that I can pray. My pastor said that I have the name of Jesus. Because it's in the Word. Somebody said, well, I don't know where that scripture is. Just say, my pastor said. Until you learn and you know where it is in the Word. Are you with me? Say this after me. I have received delegated authority. I am an ambassador of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have been given that authority to proclaim the gospel to the whole world. According to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, Jesus, the head of the church, said to me, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that is believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. It's not my job to damn anybody. It's my job to preach to them. If they receive it, they will turn. If they don't, they will damn themselves. So I am from this day, the 25th day of the month of June, 2023, operating in authority that's been given to me by a sovereign God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has given me the truth of his word. And by the truth of his word, I've been given the great commission by Jesus, who is the head of the church. He has not only given me his word, He's given me his name. He's given me his blood. And he's given me his Holy Spirit. That I can step into that place as an ambassador representing the kingdom of heaven and draw a line in the sand and tell, tell the devil, no, you've come this far, but you're coming no further. I take authority over you. That's my commission. So raise your hand, because I'm deputizing every one of you. In the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, and by the power and authority of the Word of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I commission every one of you to be ambassadors of this good news. Now say this out loud, say, Lord, Lord, your word declares in Mark 16, 17 and 18, 
These signs will follow those that believe in your name. They will cast out devils. I have authority to cast out devils. Your word says they shall speak with new tongues. Your word says they shall take up serpents. Say, Lord, I know that that does not mean I play with snakes. That means if a serpent bites me, I can shake it off and no harm will come to me. Your word says that if I drink any deadly thing, it will not harm me. That does not mean I'm going to go drink poison. That means if somebody tries to poison me, it will not work because your hand is upon my life. I am your ambassador and I thank you for it. I've been given authority to use your name and to do your works in the earth, to preach the gospel, cast out devils, speak with new tongues, to lay hands on the sick. Even if I'm sick, I can still lay hands on myself and I can pray for others around about me. Thank you, Lord. I act on this responsibility and I exercise this authority. Your word is a standard and the Holy Spirit will back me up and you protect me in my ways of obedience. I thank you that I'm not alone. I'm a part of a family, a church family, and I'm accountable to my brother and my sister and then to my pastors. And I thank you that I make myself accountable to you. I promise you, I will not violate or move away from the truth or pollute or dilute your truth of your word with some genetically modified word. I thank you for your organic word that will carry me. I thank you, Lord, that I will not move away. I will not violate my conscience that when you speak to me, I will obey. And I thank you because of this, I submit myself to this. I'm expecting total deliverance by the power of your Holy Spirit. Now listen carefully to me before we pray. Because there are many people here that God is getting you ready. And I'm not talking about what he's doing with you right now in your everyday life. But I believe God is getting people ready for one of these higher callings that they're going to be future pastors sitting here, evangelists, missionaries that will go to the nations of the earth. How many people here feel that God's called you to something higher and much bigger? Wave your hand. So what the Lord is doing is getting you ready. He's getting you ready. And what God is doing is forging you in his fire. I have to stay submitted to him. I have to. I can't just do my own thing. I'm talking about me, Rodney. I can't do my own thing. Somebody said, you can. You're in charge. I cannot. I have to obey him. I have to do what he tells me to do. Now you might be here today and say, Pastor, I'm too old for this. No, you're not. You're just ripe. I said, you're just ripe. Somebody said, I'm too young for this. No, you're just right. Somebody said, I uh, never saw myself doing any of this. Listen, it's what God has seen you do. Every life here, every life, was ordained of him not to live in mediocrity or to leave this planet and no one knew you were here. But every life 
was placed here by God to cause history to be written. And I believe that we are in a pavilion here today full of history makers. History makers. Down through the centuries, down through the years, there have been men and women that have wreaked havoc on society. But I believe there are men and women here today that will wreak havoc on the devil's kingdom. And the devil will quake because of what God will do through your life. Somebody said, well, how do I do that? That comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, young man, quickly. God's using him. He's in the, he's in the NFL. Lift your hands. Fire! From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Yeah, he, he plays in the NFL. He came down here hungry for God. Somebody said, well, is he okay? He's fine. He's not vexed. He's okay. Some people, if you see them fall over, it's because of the vax. This, the Lord's giving him a vaccination right now. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, don't pick on me. What? This lady right here, step over here, sister. Come, step right over here. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Filled from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. She's going to be okay. Trust me, I'm a doctor. She's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. Now, if you don't want me to pray for you, don't look at me. Because if you look at me, then that's a flag that you want me to pray for you. Here's what I tell you. Just stare up into the ceiling and pick a point. Somebody said, what's happening? This is God's operating table. Somebody said, what's the Lord doing for them? None of your business. Don't be so inquisitive. You don't run into a hospital operating room and go in there, somebody's being operated. What are you doing here? What are you doing for them? I'd like to know the procedure. Get out of here. Power of God's all over this field right now. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we'll get there. Just wait. I know, no, I know, I know. Just wait. Don't be in a hurry. Father. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fall on every hungry person. Now, in Jesus' name, and fill them. That's it right now, all across this field, in your homes. It's okay, this joy is, this joy is legal. I said this joy is legal. This is not illegal. Only Davos wouldn't want you to have it. <laughs> Dr. Fauci doesn't want you to get this joy. Dr. Finocchio. Pilt! Sweep this place. Sweep this place, Lord. Sweep it. Sweep it. 
Come here, pick up Jesus. This is Jesus. He's Spanish. Only the Spanish have the gall to call themselves Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, bless Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. Bless them all, Lord. Jesus and two of his disciples. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them to overflowing. Anoint the heads with oil. That's what he's doing right now. He's anointing your head with oil. He's filling your cup to overflowing. I was socially distant years ago because of this joy. If I walked in a room, preachers would huddle in a corner to get away from me. Stay away from him. Stay away from him. That joy will get on you. Don't go down there to that river church. You'll get happy. People are being healed right now. People are being set free right now. Heavy burdens are lifting off of people right now. Depression is going off of people right now. Bondages are being broken off of people right now. Addictions are being broken right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, lady, that's it. That's it, lady, you got it. You got it, lady. You got it, lady. There's strength coming into you right now. I said there's strength coming into you right now. Don't worry about the noises around you. There's strength coming into you. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I said the joy of the Lord is your strength. You shall go out with joy. You shall be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. The trees of the field will clap your hands. I want everybody across this place just to bow your heads. 
I want to give an invitation. Maybe you came here today, you've never ever given your life to Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, come be my Lord and my Savior. I want to ask you a question today. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? What would happen if you went home today, put your head on your pillow, and in the middle of the night you passed? Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? Today he calls you. Today he says, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He calls you. Will you surrender to him? Will you say, yes, Lord Jesus? He will never force himself on you. He only comes where he's wanted. He says, come. Come unto me, all you that labor and ever laden. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. It calls you. Jesus stands with the arms wide open and he says, come. He says, come. Maybe you hear under the sound of my voice or you're watching in your homes. You gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. But today the Lord's calling you to come back and to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Will you say yes, Lord? Maybe it's something hidden that no one can see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger. Lust, the hidden things that clog the heart of man. Maybe it's something outward that all can see. And the enemy uses it against you to keep in a place of guilt and condemnation. But today you say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. He calls you. He says, Come. He loves you. His arms are wide open today. Maybe you say, Pastor, I gave my life to Jesus, but my life took a turn. The enemy took me out of my path. I've been through many storms, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. But today you say, I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Will you let him do that today? Will you say, yes, Lord? And then maybe you hear today, you say, I do love the Lord, but I'm not sure. I don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm a child of God. But today I want to know. I want to know like other people I've heard you today. I want to know beyond any doubt that I'm a child of God. If this is you and you fit into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Right where you are, quickly, I want you to just put your hand up and say, pray for me right now. I need Jesus. God bless you. 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 All the way to the back. God bless you. God bless you. Just slip it up high on the sides. God bless you. God bless you. Put it up high and say, yes, today is my day of freedom and liberty. Once you've raised it, you can put it down. I want you to look at me, please. If you would, please. 
along this side of the pavilion, if you didn't raise your hand but want to be included, quickly slip your hand up and say, include me right now. Include me right now. Thank you. What about in the center section? You didn't raise your hand but want to be included. Put your hand up right now. Thank you. And on this side, you didn't raise your hand but want to be included. Slip your hand up and say, include me. Thank you. I want every person that raised your hand to stand right where you are quickly. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. All across the field, stand, 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 stand. Stand, stand, stand. I want to pray with you and for you. I want you to bring your personal belongings and come from where you are and come stand right there. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Come. Before me, the world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. behind me. No turning back. No turning back. You could take the whole world. But give me Jesus. Take the whole world, take the world. but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. want all of you standing here just to look at me. Today, you did not come to man, but you've come to the Lord. If you've been busy with God, God means busy with you. Because this is very personal. I, I was five years old when I gave my heart to Jesus. Five. So people think the Lord doesn't know who they are. He knows exactly who you are. People think the Lord doesn't know where they live. He knows exactly where you live. And that's why I say, if you mean business with God, God means business with you. If God can find me in Africa. He can find you anywhere. God is no respected person. I've had the privilege of going to 88 countries of the world. And I've never found one nationality that he rejected. Not one. Not one. Not one country that I go to, the Lord said, I don't love these people. He loves everybody the same. That's, how he, that's what he is. That's how he is. And so we're going to pray a simple prayer. You that are watching in your homes, as they pray here, you can pray with me. Just close your eyes, raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. 
and pray this together with me right now. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now just lift both hands. Let me pray over you. Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Lord. Let every bondage be broken. Let every addiction be broken. Let every spirit of witchcraft be broken off of them. Every curse against a life, I break that curse and I send it back to its point of origin. I break it. I break it off of you. I break fear. I break bondage. I break addictions. I break everything that would hold you back. We set you free by the power of the blood of Jesus. From this day, the devil's plan over your life is totally canceled and God's plan for your life is enacted. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.